Hi, everybody. It's Colette Baron reed Welcome to this month, because we're doing it monthly now, overview of the energy. This is a predictive and a prescriptive reading. I am working with my oracle cards, the Shaman's Dream Oracle Card deck that I did with Alberto Valaldo based on the shaman archetype. Given that we have all been thrown into an initiation in the past couple of years, it is an apt deck, and it's one of my favorites to actually do readings with. Now, when I say I'm making a prediction, I'm not predicting events as much as I'm tracing energy. I'm like looking at where is the energy flowing? And then the prescription part is what do we do about that? So that's always how I do my readings, okay? So you're gonna get a bit of both because I believe just a prediction is really looking at a snapshot in time that's only possible and potential and takes away our opportunities to change things. This gives us a more fluid view of life on life's terms, as well as our ability to be the shaper of our reality, not just the shaped. So we do have a say. So some in some ways, right? So at least we are able to find a way in which to mitigate difficult circumstances and to support the positive ones. <music> Okay, so let's get going on this. We have February now, and what is February? February is the month of the heart. At least that's what I feel. I have a lot of people I love born in February, some of my family members, uh, some of my friends, and uh, I have a big love for February. And of course, Valentine's, for those of you who know about it or celebrate it, some of you don't, doesn't really matter. It's just that it's kind of like the love month. Um, the first card that tells us the energy of this month is heart home, which is compassion. Now, interestingly enough, we're also in a universal year of six in numerology, which is all about relationships, family connections, healing those connections, um, finding ways in which we see ourselves reflected in others. Everything is relationships, everything is. We relate to ourselves, we relate to our higher powers, we relate to each other, and it's our friends too, like how much do we bring ourselves to our friendships? How intimate are we with people? Um, and the call for this month is compassion. Now we're in that, remember I said universal year of six, which is all about these relationships, um, but also it's now it's the month which is, resonates to eight, which is really about getting going, but also taking care of our health, right? So it's a month where we would look at our finances, we would take a look at what's going on in terms of, um, you know, the exchange of our energy. How about that? So we look at it like that. We look at our energy output. What do we get back? We look at our money. We look at um, all the hard work that we've put in the past nine months or eight, sorry, the cycle of nine, like the last time we had a, an eight month. What were we doing last year, at, eight months ago, sorry, at this time? And then this is the culmination of that. So we have a number of mixed messages this February. And remember, we also have to look at the context in which we live. So here's the energy, and then let's talk about it in the greater context. So compassion is our number one priority right now. And why do you think that is? Well, the entire world is still dealing with this pandemic. That's something we all share in common. We may not share in common the way in which it's impacting us. And that's why compassion is our crucial number one priority. I actually meditate every morning on releasing the suffering of others, like praying for other people that their suffering is released. And that's the best way that we can um, see this month is to remember to be compassionate with others. They may not see the world the way we do. They may not be experiencing the way the way the world the way we are, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> the world the way we are. Ooh, that's a tongue twister. And so it's really important to remember that the world is not suction cupped onto the ends of our noses. Um, and that when we consider the greater context of people who are suffering, people who are going through something that is really, really difficult, there's been a collective trauma uh, response that's been going on now. For a long time, we weren't equipped to be under so much constant stress. So uh, this is the key this month, you know, is to love, be, bring that love forward to the best of your ability. Compassion is also to yourself. Don't expect perfection from yourself and don't expect it from other people. And live and let live is also key. Now, it's kind of interesting because on the, the main energy is also bold step forward, which makes sense because that resonance of the number eight for this month. But then it also has curiosity, which typically 
you know, bold stepping forward is like, yes, I'm gonna jump. And then, but curiosity asks us to stay a little while and check it out. So there's a bit of push pull this month. We wanna step forward. We wanna do the bold step forward. And that is calling for us to do it. Like, let's do this. It also could be as well too, inventions, things like that. Like we hear of something that, oh wow, there's a solution. These could be like, boo, big solutions but there's also a need to be curious. So there's a discovery process this month is requiring us all to feel ourselves too. We wanna move forward in a big way, but we're in the learning mode and we need to stay curious. We can't say that we know it all. That's really key also uh, for this month. So that's the core message. Now, the next three cards tell us where the energy is naturally flowing, okay? So it's again, a mixed bag, heart is first, Stay curious, know you're gonna to wanna to push forward, but patience is going to be a big virtue. Now, uh, rising above the fray is what's called for. So it enables us a little bit more detachment. Uh, when that center card uh, shows up for us, we actually have access to this capacity of a little bit of, and when I say neutrality, I don't mean not caring. It means that not taking the world personally and really understanding that there's a bigger picture and not getting caught up in the minutia. That's coming naturally. And I believe that's really related to the stranger card, the curiosity card um, that says, you know, if we're curious, then we can actually step back. One of the statements in my school that we say all the time is, well, that's interesting. I wonder why that's happening. What am I making this mean? Um, and that's gonna be key for us. Um, um, what's beautiful is there's a lot of resonating with others that feels really good too. And that feels like, ah, you know, I can understand other people's pain a little more. Um, Fool's Embrace is about transmuting pain. So not only will we have a greater capacity to understand the pain of other people, but also to transmute our own pain. Like, you know, what have I, where have I taken things so personally? Where have I been swallowing, you know, guilt or shame or misplaced uh, or over responsibility for things that really aren't aren't yours to hold, right? So um, also the, ex the experience of having people project on you, these, those kind of things have happened to everybody in the past uh, you know, while. And, and this is giving us a little bit more compassion to say, you know what, I can, I can move on, I can forgive, and I can resonate and understand, and I can listen. That's the other thing. I, I, you're in a much better position to listen and not take it on. Okay, that's the other thing. This is the empaths, <laughs> beautiful message for the empaths of the world that you don't have to take other people's pain on and, it, and, and just holding space for it and not judging it as wrong. I think that's the other thing, right? Um, and just stepping back and saying, you know what, this is I, knowing your world, where is your world? Where are, the, where are the beautiful boundaries in your world and the capacity to be compassionate to other people in their worlds? At the same time, you still can get things done. So this isn't all the energy, but this is just sort of the flow of it that relates to why, um, you know, and how our compassion could be uh, presented to us or the ability for us to be compassionate in certain circumstances. Now let's take a look at the obstacles. Now the obstacles are interesting because these tell us about the obstacles and they also tell us about how to move beyond the obstacles. So the obstacles are um, in the center, the dust devil is moving out of stagnation. This is such a good card because it tells us that we could feel stagnant. We could feel like there's no end in sight. And it's a real warning not to wallow in the fear and the anxiety in the sense of, oh, nothing is working and I say yet, right? Or like, I have to take a detour. Yes, don't sit there. It's really a key to say, it's going to be up to you and myself and others to really take whatever energy we have in spite of life on life's terms, in spite of the, the, the circumstances we all find ourselves in, we can still be powerful co-creators and choose. It does take discipline and it, it takes us, um, you know, many of us don't like change, right? We all wanna hold on to our comfort zones even if they didn't work. And that's the card that surrounds this. The other obstacle is the dream thief, which is the refusal of the call. It's like when we dig our heels in and say like, no, 
I, I, I feel better being afraid of everything and being angry. <laughs> Instead, it's like, um, oh, okay, you mean that I could dive deep over here? That's the, you know, I can dive deep into what's going on for me and I can really dive deep into a task, get some deep work done and know that I have to surrender to life on life's terms. This is really a call for the serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference between the two, right? So the call is to actually surrender to what is and discover what are the things that I can change and what we can change is our inner world and what we do with the exposure to the outer world. How do we meet that outer world? Do we meet it with grace um, or do we meet it with fists, right? So, um, and this is saying, now listen, and this this is not suggesting that, you know, if you need to have that, that that's a bad thing and we don't wanna bypass anything of your own personal experience, but this is an energy report. So this is like really looking at what's there and what are we called to experience as a collective? Like, is this, you know, how are we gonna to get to peace? And sometimes you have to get go through chaos and a lot of chaos and a lot of destruction before you can get to peace. And so this is saying your part in that, my part in that is to like, listen to the call, uh, you know, dive deep. Sometimes you have to say, okay, I can't handle all of this. What can I? Sometimes it's, you have to get your world so micro and so tiny and, and, and schedule, uh, and schedule yourself to the point where you're saying, okay, now I can focus on this. Now I can focus on this. Cause you can ask yourself, where's my energy going all the time? What am I actually looking at all the time? And how's it making me feel? Um, if you do have a choice, um, and you can give yourself the choice to say, you know what, I'm out right now, I need to replenish. This is all about the oxygen mask, all about that oxygen mask. Um, so what also is beautiful about this, the obstacles section is we get out of all our obstacles by by action. This is not by just thinking. The, the, and, it, and it may not be that we think and or take an action about something specific that is the issue. It could be that we take actions in other areas of our lives like creativity or, uh, or something that we might have just started and we wanna focus, focus on that when we realize I don't, I don't have any power to change any of that. So I can't just sit here and stare at it, but I can do this. Right, so there's lots and lots of ways since that then when we focus on this sometimes and often that take that thing over there takes care of itself. It unravels. It's no longer that horrible sticky hairball <laughs> that got vomited out on your lap <laughs> and you're like, ah, I need to fix it right now, right, right, right now. And no, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe it's un not fixable right now. Maybe what is is not about fixing anything, is about allowing something to be exactly as it is and taking a breath and focusing on what you actually feel that you can um, have an influence over um, in a positive way. Remember, this is all about what's in the highest good for all of us. That's the only question I ever ask when I do these readings. What's in the highest good for everybody? Okay, now let's talk about the hidden influences in the month of February. I love this because it made sense with what I just said over here. Joyful Muse, which is all about being inspired. What does inspiration mean? It means of the spirit. Spira, inspirare is I breathe spirit. I breathe the universe and the universe breathes me. Who is breathing me right now? Ask yourself that. Oh, oh wow. There's more than me here, more than me. So this is really about surrendering to your higher power. That's the hidden influence, the, the, that there is creativity, there is, there's joy, and joy can be held in the same tension as pain. You know, that that's, it's, it's both and. And we are incredibly resilient creatures, we are. And when you think about this, this is the way that we protect our future through the arts, through us being able to be inspired to connect with each other, to resonate with something that feels really positive to you. And, and again, we have to discover the positivity 
in the center, like the center of the storm, um, when everything else is going on around us that is actually trying to hypnotize us to get our attention away from being able to really make change happen. It's a very interesting thing when you think about it. Now, remember I said earlier, um, the concept of initiation, it's one of the reasons Alberto and I did this when after I helped him with mystical shaman, because he's the shaman, I am not, I'm the mystical part of the mystical shaman. <laughs> Um, uh, we got together and I said, you know, both of us have a background in Jungian psychology. Why don't we focus on the archetype instead of shamanism? Uh, I want to talk about what is the archetypal energy of this. And part of it is that we prepare and we do an initiation and the preparation stage is actually something that's really sacred and meaningful, but none of us actually got to do that, right? We've been preparing all along, even though we didn't know it, but it wasn't you know, you can't really look at that and go, oh, I knew and I was making it sacred and I was ready and nobody was ready. Um, and then we were called to the underworld, if you will, or the, the places within us, the shadow, the shadow of all of our society. And then we come back. The initiation is to come back and cross the bridge with a gift, right? And that's how we protect our future. But this is the best part. This year and this entire year, there is a lot of inspiration. So we have to remember that, that in the midst of everything, there are these beautiful shining strands of creativity and inspiration that keeps us linked to our higher power. And we discover, and, and because we don't know these, because we're in uncharted waters, all of us are, we discover something extraordinary when we let go. And, you know, I say let go and let God. Um, do our part. You don't stay armchair astronauts, right? Do our part, lead with compassion, lead with love as best as you can. Um, and that's how we cross that bridge. The initiation is crossing that really scary bridge to the other side. Um, now here is what is the wild cards. And these are great. So there is a sacred contract already. That's the wild card. The wild card is guess what? We all signed up for this. Um, and, uh, we have to remember that, that we're part of a species on this planet um, that has a group soul. There's the anima mundi, the soul of the world that has signed up for this. And we're all here now to help uh, birth this new new human, a new, new societies into the world, going to the birth canal. I'm sure if you've had a child, you know that wasn't fun necessarily. <laughs> you know, it hurts. Birth, birthing is, is a painful process and you could feel like you're about to die, but the point is, is that you don't, right? And that's the perfect storm, the courage to step into life. That's the other wild card. In the perfect storm, that's when bravery comes. You ask spirit to bring you that bravery, that courage. So both and, but being in the center of the eye of the storm instead of, instead of allowing yourself to be thrown around like the furniture that you see, right? You know, woo, 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 woo. That's not, that's not going to be for you, no matter what. Um, drifter experiencing life as it comes. This is again, life on life's terms. Now it's interesting because last month I did my fantastic vision board challenge and it was amazing and people loved it. People came from all over the world. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people came. And what was interesting, uh, was how much everybody really valued the idea of self-actualization rather than accumulation or acquisition or acquiring stuff. And that really is what all of us are required to do this month is really step into self-actualization. And that means to become the person that can meet the environment in, a, in such a way that is greater than what the environment is telling you. Like we, if you just look at outer conditions to tell you where you are, you will get lost. Instead, you make the decision that the primary environment, that's that primary environment is here. You're surrendering to life on life's terms. You're curious to see where things go. You're accepting things and you're changing them as you can one day at a time. What a great month. I'm excited about this month. Um, and Hey, listen, you know what? Nothing is going to come up roses without some thorns, right? There's going to be thorns on those roses and that's okay. You know, beauty will come with some pain and this is what we're all experiencing right now. But remember, don't focus on the thorn, right? Both and they both get to exist in their integrity on that stem, the rose and the thorn.
right? We have to live with both. So let's do a recap. I'm just going to kind of go really around this. So the center of this reading is stay in your heart, no matter what, stay in your heart, stay in your heart, stay in your heart, be compassionate to yourself. That's also about setting boundaries with yourself, by the way, too. What is sacred to you? What's important to you? Self-care is key. Um, being compassionate to yourself and others, um, knowing that you want to push forward, you really want to, well, I want, I want that, but knowing also you need a little bit of patience because you need curiosity to see, well, I wonder what life is offering me right now. Okay. Now, where are we naturally heading? We actually are naturally heading into recognizing that the world is not personal. We're naturally all, and that we're all in this together. And actually this year is about that. It's as if we don't find a way to get together, forgive, get, you know, create some kind of unity. This is going to be a very difficult year because we can't do this polarized. So we will be seeing more of the polarization, but here we go. It's about transmuting what is painful into something that resonates and there's a greater sense of connection to others. Okay. Then the obstacles are, well, get out of stagnation. If you feel stagnant and you feel like you're sitting in your dirty diaper, um, oops, <laughs> that's that phrase I use for like, oh yes, pity pot. Or like when you're sitting on the pity pot, there you are, get off, get off the pot. Um, and do something that will get you out. Clean your house, get up, do whatever you can. This is all about the serenity prayer. The refusal of the call, you might go, no, I like it here. No, no, no. <laughs> the idea is that say yes, say yes to life, say yes to life. Actually, it's one of the best books, Say Yes to Life by Viktor Frankl. If he could do it out of a concentration camp, I read that when I'm in a lot. Ooh, I want, if this man can do that, and if he's saying that, I can too. Um, deep dive, get into deep work, focus, get, get focused. Don't let the outer world hypnotize you into forgetting that you have a say in how you experience life. Then we have this beautiful hidden influences of the inspiration and creativity. And that's how we protect our futures by remembering this is an, initi an initiation and we're going to bring treasure back. We really will. This is for real. And then the wild cards, there's a sacred contract that we already made. We don't have to worry about this. We are, we were called here. We were born at this time for a purpose. And that purpose is to have courage to step into life and bring something to life that is yours and yours alone that serves the collective. And also to remember to experience life as it comes. Don't fight against what, like, it's like, don't try to push up the river. If something is really, if you're banging on a door and it's refusing to open, go through the open door over there, right? So that's, and then maybe you'll find yourself coming back around through a corridor and the door that was closed, you walk in no problem into the room, right? So, so we have to remember that push, push, push doesn't always work. Not this month. Anyway, there's months at work, not this one. All right. See you next month. Take care. Bye-bye. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Leave me a comment. We love reading your comments. Boy, oh boy, we love them. I love you guys. And I'm going to see you next month with another monthly overview of the energies, prediction, and prescription. See you then. Bye.